Kate. I'm Sonia. And I'm Allison. And today we're dishing with you from The Daily Dish, located at 5301 Grub Road in Silver Spring. And the food is fantastic here. They make their own pasta, including the wonderful mac and cheese you see here, including some great sweet potato gnocchi that we're going to get to later. We also have diver scallops. The seafood here is always fresh. And they have a wonderful meat dish. Braised short ribs. That's wow. right. And the Yum. shiitake mushrooms really add a little zing to it. And don't forget the dessert. Dessert is always primo here. You can have some sweet potato dessert or the good old creme brulee. It looks delicious. But don't forget, they also are known as the daily dish. So on Saturday and Sunday, they have a delicious brunch. But something I never heard of, which is a build your own Bloody Mary. You can add it with, you know, a gin cocktail or tequila or the standard vodka V8. All or kinds try them of different all. juice. Uh, uh, and, then, and then have someone come pick you up. <laughs> Just a little bit north of DC, you can come here every day. And today we are dishing with social media marketing stylist and the author of the complete idiot's guide to social media marketing. Jennifer Abernethy. Jennifer, thanks so much for being with us. Oh, we have to be here. a lot of crazy stuff we want to talk to you about today because everybody's okay. talking about social media. Social media, social media, social media. Right. But really, then everybody want, wants to know, well, how does that, what does that mean for me? And what does that mean for, for me, whether um, I have my own business or I work for someone else, but I want to develop my own brand and my own social media savvy. Mm -hmm. So you wrote this book. Mm -hmm. Which has my name in the title. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot, no more after you read it, though. Idiot, no more after you read it. I'm so proud. She wrote a book. <laughs> how do you, how, I mean, how do you tell someone how to do what the complete idiot can do? I mean, let's let's talk about that well, to I start mean, with. Here's the thing. The whole success in social media is really your mindset, and it just takes one connection to change your business or change your life. So when you log in each day, I always tell people, you have to look at this as the ultimate networking event. What person do you need to meet to really change your business? and really start looking to network with those types of people online. So when we talk about social media, are you talking about Facebook? Are you talking about Twitter? Are you LinkedIn. talking about LinkedIn? MySpace? YouTube? Instagram? I mean, there's YouTube? a million things Yeah, these days. there's all of them, all of them. So I what's know. your favorite tool? Well, I quit my business. I left corporate America in 2006, and I launched my business in 2007, not knowing, you know, I went out and started knocking at the doors of all of my old customers, and they weren't having it. It was the beginning of the recession, mm -hmm. and I wanted to help them. So I went back to this thing called Facebook that no one knew anything about for business, I went to the local mall, I got my professional headshot taken, and I started to connecting to people online, and I knew within 48 hours that this is where business was going. Mm. I started connecting to people from California, to New York, to Florida, and they were asking me about my business, about the sales lounge, and this can happen for anybody that wants to get online. But I think... So I started with Facebook, sorry, to answer your question. But, but sometimes, you know, Facebook is supposed to be that way that we connect with friends, that uh -huh. we put up pictures of our dogs or our children <laughs> or, or things that we do around town. I mean, right. when you make it about your business, does that take a little bit of the friendliness out of it? Not really, because you have to think about it. People do business with people that they like. And so, if just like you're going out to a networking event or you're going to a cafe or to a lounge and you're talking to people and you're telling them about your business, they're going to sell, tell two friends. And those two friends are going to tell two friends. Yeah. So get onto Facebook and network. Except whenever somebody posts information about their event or well, their business all over my page, let me it ask makes this me angry. A, let me yeah, ask this in a different way. And they what, shouldn't do that. What way. are the social media etiquette rules yes. of like, People hey, I want to invite you to my event, but right. I'm sort of hoping that you tell all your friends about it too. What's the right way of dealing with it? Well, the, the wrong way is to do what you just said. You don't want to go and start posting on everyone's page. Hear that? That's don't the wrong do that. way. Yeah, don't want to do right. that. You're being you on wanna... Sandy's naughty list. Right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. You want to start connecting with people, just building rapport, trust, and sharing your expertise at first, and then later invite them to your event. Not right away. It's just like when you go to a networking event, you wouldn't walk into the room and start passing out your cards and inviting them to your event. You want to get to know them, and you want them to get to know you. So the netiquette would be, first of all, get a great social media headshot. Don't put a headshot up from the family barbecue or the cookout. Take some time to get a great headshot. Second, start giving value. Why should people follow you online? Why should they subscribe to your updates? Why should they follow you on LinkedIn and Twitter? Third, you want to look at each site as a different networking experience. Don't post the same thing on each site. Mm -hmm. They're different audiences, they all have a different vibe, and amazing things can happen. Again, if just that one set of eyeballs connects to you. Well, what's the right mix of personal and business then? Because yeah. if you are kind of wanting them to share in your yeah. life and what you're really doing and you want them to think they're a friend, mm -hmm. I mean, what's what's the ratio? Well, I tell people 80% uh, business, 20% personal. That's not a hard rule. Say it again, 80% business, 20% okay. personal. 
the opposite, actually. No, no. If you're on there for business, again, keep in mind, I got in right. here for business. This book is to help people grow their business. You know, and, and some brand. people do have two separate sites. You know, Correct. I have a friend, Carrie Reichs, who's an author, and she has a, a Carrie Reichs, the author website, and a Carrie Reichs, the friend website, you know, Correct. On, on via Facebook. Uh, on Facebook. So, so some people do do that. And you have one for K Street Magazine and as well as Kate Michael. Right. Well, do, you, do you recommend that our personal ones are somehow branded a different way? Or I would like keep your personal one personal and keep so okay. you change the security settings so just your friends are seeing those. Okay. But just how if the, the network producer from ABC News sees your personal updates, right. I don't know if that's going to help you very much, well, but you certainly want to have a professional page that really showcases the best you. One of the recent news stories was uh, two girls who went to Arlington Cemetery and posted some very disrespectful pictures of themselves um, on Facebook. Uh, flipping the camera, the bird in front of the tomb of the unknown soldier, and both right, girls right. were fired. Yeah, you know, people really do look at these, you know, websites, and that's oh, a major do. thing. You know, you got to really bosses definitely right. to know whether and or not people, they should hire you know, someone. Drinking. I got, and, I got this you know, national book deal because of my Facebook. I got on ABC News because of my Twitter posts. I got an Entrepreneur Magazine because of my LinkedIn. It can lead to extraordinary opportunities. Just about remember, there's millions of eyeballs looking at you so online. So you really, you think the big ones obviously are Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and then... Well, YouTube is huge. There's four billion videos viewed every single day. Four so billion. Four billion. If you do not have a YouTube presence, you're gonna get lost in the fray. The year 2013 is gonna be the internet TV revolution. And by 2015... We would argue it's already happened. Yeah, it's already happened. <laughs> Hey, I raised my glass to that. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> chin chin. So the, yeah. um, if all of these things are changing, can you give us a, an idea of what's next? Yeah. Like, where should yes. we be getting online? Where should we be adding our handle to quickly? Well, one thing that's coming really popular is Instagram. Mm -hmm. People are starting yes. to build followers through their Instagram profiles, which is a really Tell interesting trend. Tell us about trend. Instagram. I'm new to that. So. Well, Instagram is basically, it's almost like a, a Polaroid snapshot, if you will. Of it's, it's a photograph, but it looks like a 70s or retro photograph. And people now are following people's Instagram trail. And so they're getting very popular based on the photos that they're posting. So I'm now recommending seeing that trend for 2013. The next trend for 2013 is online video. With the videos that are being viewed so much, by 2015 they're saying we're gonna be doing more video than reading email. And so you have need to start people actually starting to build their own networks on social media. So we can all do that. So I know we're coming to a new year, mm -hmm. and it's a lot of people's resolutions to really grow their businesses yes. and grow their personal brands in this new year. Yes. So I'm looking for a new year's resolution <laughs> using social media marketing okay. that can help someone to grow not just their you know their business brand but their personal brand of them. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What tool is best for that? And and how can they really get started in the new year? I would say start doing video. Because because you can take the video and post it on all the sites. You can post video on LinkedIn now, you can post video on Facebook, you can post video on Pinterest, you can post video on, on um, Twitter. So all the sites, so I think video would give you your biggest bang for the buck. If you're going to go so your resolution needs YouTube to be, you know, if you're gonna put yourself on it, that you gotta get yourself a little bit ready for that. Yeah, absolutely. You, your, you really ready. have to find your voice. I think you that's have to find other, your voice, and that's the thing. Not people, everything works for everybody. Not everything is working for everybody, that's right. That's why I call myself a social marketing stylist, because everyone has a different audience that right. they're trying to attract. So I wouldn't recommend uh, the same marketing plan for you as I would for you, and vice versa. And because of that, that's why she's written the entire Complete yes. Idiot's Guide, because every single one of us has a different marketing mix on social media. That's Jennifer, right. thank you so much for being with oh, us. Thanks for having me. Rush out and, and grab this book if, if that's your New Year's resolution. So thanks so much. And as always, and thank link you. to all of us. That's right. As <laughs> always, like, thank like you like District Dish on Facebook. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter. Twitter. The District Dish. All right. Follow. And we're online and on DCN. So check us out here next time. We'll see you on The District Dish.